This weekend marks one year since U.S. President Donald Trump was inaugurated. So it's also the one-year anniversary of the Women's March, which turned out to be the largest single-day protest in U.S. history. And while the main event last year took place in Washington, cities around the world held their own protests, including dozens of marches right here in Canada. My next guests helped to organize the march in Ottawa, and they're doing it again this Saturday. Catherine Butler and Amanda Carver join me live from our nation's capital. You guys are probably expecting a whole bunch of people. Do you have any idea of numbers yet, Amanda? We actually don't. At this point, we're expected to have 1,500 people as per our Facebook page. However, there's a lot of awareness on this given that it's t going on a national and even a global level. And it's being spread around Twitter and social media. So we'll wait and see what the numbers are like. Catherine, despite the numbers, the message is what's key. What are you hoping to get out in terms of, mes of a message from this march? I think there's a couple of key messages, too, that we want to get out. And uh, the first one is that um, Canada has its own issues. There's a lot happening in the States, but this march is very much Canadian. And we have our own issues here at home to face and deal with. And one of those is that we can continue to work in the women's movement, but we're not going to make any real change until women are truly represented equally in the power and decision-making structures uh, that we have in this country. So one of the messages is we want women to run, and um, we need to be supporting those who do. I also want to ask you about the hashtag Me Too movement. Uh, Amanda, maybe you can tackle this one. Um, how has that sort of invigorated the voices of women, not only speaking, but being heard uh, in Canada and around the world? I think that this all started off last year because there were a lot of flippant comments made about sexual harassment, sexual assault that we've really kind of latched onto and built over the last year. And interesting enough, the Me Too movement actually started about 10 years ago by a woman of color, but it wasn't taken seriously until this year um, some actresses and some wealthy actresses became emboldened to speak out. And what that's done is it's opened up a conversation about sexual harassment and sexual abuse. But what we haven't done is changed the structures that prevent women from coming forward and speaking out. Um, we still have an issue where only one in four sexual assaults are being reported. And oftentimes when women take these things to trial, they feel like their character is as much on the stand as the perpetrators is. And we have to, have to take this from the conversation level, which the Me Too and the Time's Up movement has been fabulous at bringing this to the forefront and have, having women share their stories. And now we have to translate that into concrete change. And do you find that there are more young people perhaps using their voices as well? I'm wondering, Amanda, if you are expecting more young people to join the marches, not only there in our nation's capital, but across across the country and how important is that for you personally? Absolutely, it's important. I think we have to get the, the message out to our generation and to the next generation that we're not going to tolerate being touched, grabbed, any sexual abuse of any kind right now. Um, for me, I, I have two small children myself, and part of the reason that I was inspired to come forward and do this march is I won't have them growing up in a society where they feel like they have the message that any transgressions against their body are taken lightly. You know what, I have two daughters, I have three kids and all. Not only for my daughters though, but for my son, I want that message out there that they have a role to play as well. Catherine, how important is it for men to understand and to support things like the Women's March? I think that's a great question, Sue, and it's funny when you asked about men, I have a young son who's six, and uh, speaking to what Amanda said, I think so much of, of what's at, at the foundation of all of the women's, uh, the rights movement is the, is the impacts of a, a culture of toxic masculinity, and uh, boys and men um, grow into a culture in which they're surrounded by what it means to be a man, and there's very little deviation from that in our country and in our culture. And this is not just a women's issue, this mm -hmm. is a human issue. Um, women have so much to contribute, and men, if we make the world better for women, and we can really downplay and get rid of the toxic masculinity that exists, we will make the world better for men and for everyone. There won't be the same types of pressures on them to be a certain way and to bottle up emotion because they're told that's not how you are and it's not the right thing to do as a man. So men's roles, I think, are almost as important as women's in turning, uh, in turning things around and in changing the culture that we live in. You know what, I agree with you. And then I think uh, we march for humanity, we march for men, we march for women, we march for a sense of respect. Uh, Amanda, are you seeing that growing? I mean, I, I'm, I'm wondering, do, do you have hope, I guess is my question. 
I do have hope. And I think that's what the march was really instrumental in doing last year, was restoring a sense of hope that we are the kind of community and society that comes together and defends our marginalized people. Um, we hope that this is a march of empowerment for people, particularly uh, people of color. And we want this march to help the Indigenous communities to raise their voices and call to people to help those communities to raise their voices. Um, this year at our march, we were being led out by a group of Indigenous drummers, mm -hmm. and we're asking that any people of color or traditionally marginalized groups be offered the space at the front of the march because we want to be supporting them. I want to thank you both for your time. I certainly hope the weather helps to uh, bring more people to your march. And uh, here at CBC News Network, we'll be covering the story. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Women's March organizers Catherine Butler and Amanda Carver, they are in Ottawa.